Hey Z Stars, what's good in the hood? It's your girl Zara, aka FX Zara, and I'm back with another video. Now, if you've never been here before, welcome. If you have been here before, welcome back. Now, today we're going to talk about how to grow your hair super long, super fast in 2020. Now, these are the things they never tell you. And this is a lot of really valuable information that you absolutely do not want to miss. So I'm not gonna waste your time. Let's just get right into this video. But of course, before we do, please be sure to give this video one big thumbs up. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you wanna see next. Be sure to share this video with all of your friends and your loved ones. And last but never ever least, subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's get right into this. If you're not already, make sure you're following me on Instagram via Efik Zara, E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A. There you can see all my lovely pics and interact with me. And be sure to also follow me on Twitter via Efik Zara, the same E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A. There I talk to you all, I share my thoughts, and we're going to be doing a lot of giveaways very soon, so stay tuned. Now, obviously, I'm still in my house. I've been here for days. I'm feeling a bit of this cabin fever. I feel like I low-key never leave my room. <laughs> but here I am in my office space filming for you all. Now, someone complained last time that I was a bit far away, so I've tried a different lens today just to see what's up. Let me know what you think of this setup. If you prefer the two angle with a bit of distance in the previous video, let me know. If you prefer this, let me know. But anywho, that short digression aside, let's get right into this video. So the first lie is that protective styles are not protective. Now I literally just made a video all about this and I'm going to link it right here in the top right corner, your top right, so that you can check it out in another window or another tab and view it before viewing the rest of the video or after viewing this video. It's really pertinent. Since I made that video, I'm not going to go into extreme detail, but a lot of people purport this rhetoric that protective styles are actually not protective simply because they're not, one, prepping their hair properly, they're not installing them properly, they're not taking them down properly, and they're not caring for their hair while it's in the protective style. Like, of course, your hair is gonna be a mangled hot mess if you're not actually protecting it while you're doing the protective style. And aside from that, people do styles that are not necessarily suitable for them and their hair type. If you're that guy, stop what you're doing and switch it up. You need to do a protective style that's actually going to benefit your hair. And again, you all can check out that video where I talk all about protective styling and why it's super beneficial. Obviously, my hair is in a protective style right now, so I feel like I'm a pretty good authority on this particular subject because protective styles for me and my finer strands actually help me retain a lot of length. The next lie that people tend to like to tell is that in order to make your hair grow, you need to trim it. Now I've spoken about this on numerous occasions. Probably the most recent video where I've addressed this is the five myths that will stunt your hair growth, which again, I'm going to link in the top right corner for you all to view. <laughs> like this is absurd. Literally what's happening at the end of your hair has nothing to do with your scalp. Now transitively, it could stop your hair growth because it will hinder length retention. So if you don't actually trim your hair regularly, if you're not trimming when you have splits and breakage, then your hair is probably gonna be breaking off and that will ultimately keep you from retaining your length, which will make it seem like your hair is not growing even though it's growing out of your head. However, the ends of your hair are not in direct communication with your scalp. Your hair is not living <laughs> like, come on y'all, come on, please. Let's drop that in 2020. And let's instead take good care of our hair so that it retains length as opposed to trimming unnecessarily. This lie is ridiculous to me, but I understand why people continue to spout it. And that is that dirty hair makes your hair grow. Now that's a really embarrassing lie in my humble opinion for a few reasons. <laughs> now, first of all, if your scalp is really, really dirty, you could cause a lot of issues with fungus, with bacteria, with dandruff, which is ultimately the result of fungal overgrowth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're not trying to have no scalp issues in 2020. We left those behind in 2019. I mean, we're already having enough issues in 2020 as is. I'm not trying to add my scalp to the 99 problems that 2020 has presented. So nah fam, nah sis, nah bro, nah genderless sibling. Like nah, 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 nah. 
A dirty scalp actually obstructs your hair growth. Yes, you heard me correctly. If your scalp is dirty, it could cause your hair growth to be stunted. It could also cause misshapen hair shafts in the most severe cases. Like if your scalp is severely blocked, your hair will be growing out all like deformed and ish. And that's not cute. It's not cute fam, nor is it healthy. So please cleanse your scalp. Now I understand why people would continue to say that. And it's because ultimately when your hair is dirty you're probably not touching it or manipulating it so that's why people are saying oh yeah my hair is dirty my scalp um and everything is thriving blah blah my hair grows out my head faster but no that's not necessarily the case you're actually doing yourself quite a bit of harm if you allow your scalp to become super dirty nasty this next lie is interesting and somewhat controversial and a lot of people like to say that taking supplements doesn't help your hair to grow no, I can understand why people would think that, but actually supplements are really important. Maybe not necessarily supplements, but getting the right amount of nutrients. And if you're not getting the right amount of nutrients, you probably need to supplement. Now, if you're taking something like sulfur in the form of MSM, please don't be taking yellow sulfur powder and say I'm the one that told you to do it. That's not for human consumption, but you can take MSM and combining that with vitamin C and also iron actually then you're doing a lot of favors for your body. Anyone who's suffering from random hair loss might actually have anemia. Iron deficiency in women especially is one of the number one reasons why we start to lose hair all of a sudden. So it's really important to get your iron levels checked by a professional. And if you do happen to be anemic, then your professional could recommend some reasonable iron supplements. Now, as far as MSM and vitamin C, MSM contains sulfur and sulfur is one of the building blocks of life. So if your body has sulfur in surplus, it's going to put that towards your hair, your skin and your nails. But aside from that, your body needs sulfur to flip and function. So if you're deficient in any of these areas, it will show in your hair. If you're deficient period, your body's going to hoard nutrients and make sure that your vital organs get those nutrients. It's not going to put them toward vanity like your hair and your nails. Skin is not vanity so much, but of course, if your skin doesn't look good, are you going to be happy? No, it's still going to be doing its job, which is to protect you, but you're not going to be pleased. So please get the right amount of nutrients into your body. That's so important. What's also important is to make sure that you have enough amino acids. That means make sure you're consuming enough proteins. It doesn't have to be for meat. There are other great sources of protein. But if you are like me and you're vegetarian or vegan, then you should probably drink a protein shake. The next one is really annoying and I'm just tired of hearing this rhetoric and I don't know why people be standing so dang hard, but people are like, wash and go, grow your hair. I'm sorry, I'm like kind of a troll, you guys. And I know that that works for some people, but that can never work for me. If I was to be doing wash and goes every damn day, I'd be having single strand knots. My hair would be feeling like a flipping bed of hay bars. I'm personally not about that wash and go life. And if you want your hair to thrive, you probably shouldn't be either. Again, that works for some people. I'm not knocking that, nor am I denying that very apparent fact but it does not work for everyone. And everyone who's always preaching, oh, you need to do wash and goes, that's why your hair's not growing, is full of <laughs> Excuse my French, but they're full of <laughs> Wash and goes are not finna grow your hair if your hair is flipping 4C, 4B, 4A, most likely, because those hair types are more prone to single strand knots. Now there are certain silkier textures that maybe can get away with doing wash and goes often, maybe they don't get single strand knots, but each and every person's hair is different. So don't just listen to your favorite guru who's always telling you to do those damn wash and goes. Try and figure out what works for you, please and thank you. Even everything that I'm telling you, though it's well researched. <laughs> and i obviously am full of knowledge <laughs> because i've taken the time to do the flipping research please take everything i say with a grain of salt because each individual's journey each individual's experience is very very different now personally if my hair is not in a fro which i don't really be doing much because i'm trying to make sure my hair is happy and healthy it's stretched and i've been over this many times before please stretch your hair if you want your hair to grow keep it stretched to avoid those single strand knots. See, I'm just trying to help you out. Trust me, trust me here. Petrolatum and other chemicals are bad for your hair. 
First of all, who's saying this nonsense? Do you people even know what chemicals are? If chemicals are bad for you, then I guess that means water is bad for you. Water is literally a flipping chemical. It's a chemical compound for God's sake. It's not even an element. People like to say, oh yeah, the elements, fire, water, air. Um, nah, no, it doesn't work like that. An element is literally a pure substance. It's not made up of two elements. I don't even, in fact, let's just put the definition up on the screen so that you guys understand what an element is. And then let's also put the definition of a compound up on the screen. And then let's also put the definition of a chemical up on the screen so you all understand what we're working with here. Now, obviously, as quick as that went, you're gonna have to go back and read them again and pause to read. I know I put that up on the screen, so I hope you already did that, but yeah. Elements essentially are pure flipping chemicals. Everything, every substance on the flipping planet is a chemical. So if we take this mentality of natural is better into the hair care space, we're going to end up putting caustic and other materials on our hair and our scalp in the favor of, oh, let me use nature. No, that's like very silly. That's very silly. And I know I'm being extremely harsh, but it's so foolish. I encourage everyone to please do your research. <laughs> yes, I'm like heavily rebuking everyone who actually spews that nonsense because it's really ignorant. It's extremely ignorant. There's a reason why science exists. And in a lot of cases, certain things from nature are refined so that our bodies can use them and consume them and actually work with them in a way that's not going to be harmful. A great example is petrolatum. And I've talked all about the truth about hair grease and petrolatum, which is going to be linked in the top right corner as per usual. Now that video did really well and I worked really hard on it. If you want a very, very in-depth view on what it means to produce petrolatum, what it means to use it, what it does to the hair, the skin, and the body in general, then please watch that video. Personally, I stand petrolatum. I'm a huge fan of it in my hair especially because my skin is very, very sensitive and it literally doesn't cause any negative reactions like a lot of other products do. So think about that, watch that video and try and understand why that is, please. With sound research, your hair's length is determined by your genetics. Okay, you know what? That's like, I'm sure partially true, but at the same time, there are many cases that have proven that with proper care, your hair will thrive regardless of your genetic predisposition. Now, a great example is chatty and women um, of that particular tribe. I'm going to put the details up on the screen so that I'm not like misquoting anything or giving you guys false information since obviously here we're all about knowledge and knowledge being power. <laughs> But those women in that particular ethnicity, they use chebe powder on their hair. They prepare it a certain way and use it on their hair. And the hair is super long. Now, interestingly enough, what juxtaposes that is the fact that they don't use it on every part of their head slash hair. They only use it on certain parts. And those parts that they don't use it on are stunted. They firmly believe that their hair growth is the result of their special chebe recipe. And personally, I have to agree with them. Ultimately, your hair, your body, everything in life, you are what you put into it. If I wanna be a fine girl, if I want to be a hot cake, I have to work on it. I have to put that effort into my body, into my appearance. If I want my skin to glow, I need to actually put the time in to make sure that I'm not breaking out, etc., etc. Same with the hair. If you want your hair to be long, no matter what your genes are saying to you, if you actually nurture it, it will grow. That one is certain. Even if your hair is prone to breakage, if you decide that you're not going to touch your hair, if you literally just leave it in a loose bun every day, moisturize maybe every other day, every two days, every three days, deep condition, you don't touch it, you don't comb it, you only finger detangle. I guarantee you within a year or two years, you're going to see a lot of length. Why? Because you're listening to what it is that your hair needs and you're responding to that. Every individual is different. You can't expect to do the same thing as someone else and receive the same outcome when your genetic makeup is completely different. So in a sense, this is somewhat true. But the reason why I disagree is because ultimately, your hair is what you make it. You can't change your curl pattern, nor can you change your texture 
or the general traits of your hair, the general like predisposition, the characteristics. You can, however, change how it looks. You can change its length. You can change the color, etc., etc., etc. There are so many things that you can do to make your hair be ultimately what you want it to be within those confines. You get what I'm saying? The next line, and this is my favorite one because obviously I feel like at this point, I can proclaim myself to be like a YouTube queen of Greece, but um, Greece is bad for your hair. Now I've obviously made several videos about this, which I'm going to reference in the top right corner as per usual. Now I've already referenced one of them. The next one is the lies the natural hair community told you about Greece, because there's a lot of misinformation, again, a lot of false rhetoric that's not helpful to anyone on a hair journey. Now, Greece is one of the best, if not the best, sealants that I've used in my life. My hair started thriving as soon as I started using Greece. Now, when I was in the south of Nigeria, when I was in Aquaiba and Lagos, which is one of my favorite states, <laughs> I didn't really have many issues as far as dryness or keeping moisture in, but being in Abuja is very difficult on the hair. And when I discovered grease, I finally discovered something that could hold the moisture in my hair for long periods of time, actually keep my hair malleable, healthy, and well-nourished, well-moisturized, ultimately. So grease has like really changed the game for me, and I love using it in my hair care regimen. Now, I don't think I need to go into detail in this video about all the truth regarding Greece because you all can, again, click in the top right corner and see all of that information. It's there for you, all for you, because I really value you. So please check that out if you'd like further information regarding Greece, and I highly recommend you do because using Greece might just change your story. It might change your hair story forever. I actually want you guys to comment down below. Tell me about your hair story. Tell me what you've learned. Tell me what you've experienced. And I'm also going to make a questions card so that we don't forget. But I want to hear from you all. If you've used grease especially, what has it done for your hair? Please let me know. If you can relate to these principles I've already mentioned, let me know how they've changed your hair story. This actually literally is like the exact opposite of the other one, but it's don't trim your hair. Now there are some people that firmly believe that they don't need to trim their hair, which is cool. And I'm sure there are people that actually don't need to. If you look at your ends, they're not splitting, they're not breaking. Why are you trimming your hair? There's literally no point. However, if you're like the majority of us and your ends do split or break occasionally, if you manipulate your hair enough that your ends become a bit fragile, then you definitely need to trim. You may also notice that your hair is split, but not at the end. It's split like right above the end or a little bit up the shaft. Cut that off too, because if you leave that on, it's going to do serious damage. Those are the worst kinds of splits. And I actually get those kinds of splits. I hate that. I hate that. It's so flipping much, but it's something that I've learned to manage and I've learned to deal with. I'm dealing with it every, every day by taking care of my hair the correct way. Now to avoid getting to that point, I highly recommend, again, grease, <laughs> feel your ends properly. Make sure that you're using water to moisturize, maybe a leave-in and then a very heavy sealant to keep your ends well lubricated. That's how I've been changing my own story. But again, if you do experience splits, breakage, etc., just like damaged ends, then please trim your ends. Now again, I disclaim because one of my favorite YouTubers actually talked about not trimming her hair, but um, there are some people who definitely don't need to trim their hair, but if you're like me and you do experience weathered ends from time to time, you do need to trim your hair regularly enough. And our final lie, one of my favorites, twist outs and other loose styles grow your hair. Now I understand why certain naturals will be preaching this like it's their religion, but if you look at those same naturals, they usually will have their hair in the twist or the braids for like a week plus, and then they'll do the twist out because they're so busy. So you're not wearing twist outs every day. Stop lying to your audience. <laughs> you're not helping anybody to grow their hair. Now I, I get that. It might be low manipulation for some people, but ultimately you're leaving your hair exposed to the elements. <laughs> And this is like the figurative elements, or I guess like nature. How to say, we're gonna find a different way to say this, but you're leaving your hair exposed to nature ultimately, and that's not cute. Your ends could become weathered, etc., etc. It's just not, it's not a good look. 
If you want your hair to thrive, I do not personally recommend doing twist outs per second per second. And if you do want to do twist out, maybe leave your hair in the twist for four to five days and then the weekend you twist out, then you repeat. You get me? Don't leave your hair in a single twist out, like twist it out for three flipping weeks. Are you okay? Like, of course your hair is going to be crying for help. That's a recipe for disaster. Even if it still looks good, chances are the repercussions of such an action are not going to be favorable. So everyone, that's literally my whole list. I hope this was helpful. Now I know that this was like a pretty relaxed video, but if you know me, if you've been here, you know that my general like disposition is quite calm. I'm not very extra and I hope that's something that you all are fine with. Now, if you have any questions, please drop them below. If you have any other like things that are not helpful to let us know about that are not gonna help us grow our hair and flip in 2020, please let me know. I'm very open to everything you all have to say because without you, I wouldn't have a channel. Now, I'll be back soon to announce some really exciting things. I hope you all are prepared. I'm super excited about them and I hope that you all will support me when we do release these things. So stay tuned, get excited, and let's get this show going. So I'll see you all in my next video. I love you all so much. Thank you so much, and God bless.